Greetings, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another system, an HP system. Yes, in fact, not just any HP system. This is an HP Pavilion. Oh, can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see what kind of pavilion that is? Special edition. Oh my goodness. So special. It's got things like AMD Phenom X4s and NVIDIA graphics and Windows Vistas. Well, not anymore, but here's this box we got uh, actually picked up today. <laughs> and I'm kind of doing a one day ref uh, rebuild, refurb, retro, refresh, whatever you want to call it on this box because there are a lot of people right now who are looking for computers just to get a PC in their house for, you know, homeschooling and, and online learning for their kids is, you know, this is the way things are going to be for the next while. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, you may be surprised to find that there are tons of people who just don't have computers in their house. Uh, they have a television, they might have a gaming console, they have a smartphone and maybe a tablet, but they don't have a computer because they don't do computer things like desktop word processing and spreadsheets and any kind of real work work. So doing work from home or doing school work from home isn't something that exists for them today. Um, but it's existing for them today. So they really need to come up with it. So getting these systems available right now, and I'm literally like, I have like almost none left. There's two sitting on the floor right now. And this one makes three and they're probably all going to be ready to be sent out to somebody tomorrow. Um, if there's that much demand uh, to get things going. And unfortunately, not enough people donating machines ever, um, but certainly not now. You've got a lot of people who are taking advantage of the situation um, and they're they're selling their old PCs uh, instead of donating them to try and make, a, you know, make some money out of the situation, which, you know, I think is kind of scummy. But hey, you know what? To each his own. It's a free it's a free market. And uh, and, uh, you know, I don't um, you know, I don't think that it's necessarily, you know, anyone's place to tell you if you should or shouldn't be able to do it. All right, so take a look at the front of the system here. You've got a media tray built into the, the front of the system, so it doesn't actually take up a um, an expansion bay. It's built into the, right up in the top. Uh, and then you've got a uh, one of these flipped down here where we've got a multi-burner. And then there's a second bay here that's got the panel in, uh, installed there where you could add a second optical drive if you ever needed to. I don't know why you would. And then there's one of these lower slim bays here if you needed to add a uh, floppy or a second media tray or uh, something of that nature. Uh, front audio, USB, and a Firewire port. And this cool front panel with this this design on it, which, you know, does kind of look pretty cool. Um, top power button, and there's a, an LED display that's right beside it that's not in the front of the bezel where the hard drive symbol is here. It's actually like behind it, which is kind of weird, but it is what it is. Uh, take a look on the side here. Um, HP side panel here. We've got a little bit of a uh, air duct here that goes, um, brings some airflow in to touch the back panel of the hard disk drive that's installed. Um, the original design here, so this is an HP Pavilion Phoenix SE A6655F PC. Uh, this quad-core Phenom processor, um, it I guess originally had 5 gig of RAM uh, and a 640 gig hard drive. And then uh, the LightScribe DVD burner, which is, I think, the same one that was maybe this originally came with. And then you've got this NVIDIA GeForce 6150 SE graphics. So if you're not familiar with this is, this is another one of these... Uh, MCPs, so a, a system board chipset that has integrated graphics on it, and it runs a little bit warm. So we had another compact system in here a couple weeks ago that had a similar design. It was a HP compact, obviously, um, and the graphics controller in the MCP was burning hot. This one runs not quite as hot, but still quite warm. Um, and then I guess originally this came with Vista Home Premium. This had seven on it, which I've since obviously upgraded. Flip around to the back here and we'll take a look at the back panel. So we've got our, uh, this is a Cooler Master power supply, which I don't think is the original power supply that the system would have come with. And the reason why this probably was installed is there was a, 
a GPU and a discrete graphics card that had been added to this. There was um, uh, actually, do I have it here? So the uh, the graphics card that was originally, well, not originally, but someone had installed on this one is this um, uh, Asus uh, ATI uh, 5770 uh, with one gig of memory. Um, and it's, you know, has some GPU power requirements. So I think what they may have done is replaced the basic ATX power supply that came with this with this Cooler Master 450. And that had a six pin on it so they could run this discrete graphics card. I have removed it. Um, from this system because what I generally keep these around for is when I need to provide graphics to a system that either there is no graphics on board or the graphics is so terrible that it just can't function properly. Um, the chipset that's on this system actually isn't terrible. It is only 128 meg um, of memory and it appears to be dedicated. We'll get to that though. So uh, back into the system here, you can see, uh, again, the power supply. Uh, the system board is, is built in kind of almost like upside down on these HP systems. Um, but we've got the um, old style panel access here, another Firewire port, VGA to access that onboard, and then onboard USB, Ethernet, etc. And then we've got the fans here. So we'll flip around again to the side and I'll take the door off. And again, you can see here, it's a reverse of what normally you would have in a standard case um, for the door, where everything is kind of on the opposite side of the system. Who knows why AMD uh, HP did that, but they did it. So we'll take a look inside the system here, uh, and I'm gonna tilt. So we'll take a look inside the system here. Uh, we've got these, you know, easy release latches for the optical drive. You just pull this over and you can slide the drive out and it locks into place and holds it. Um, the Cooler Master uh, power supply here again, as I mentioned, that I'm pretty sure isn't original to the system. Uh, and then inside, um, this is a 500 gig um, SATA hard drive, so not the original 650 that's on the back panel. Um, and then the memory I installed in this one is, um, four gig, so four one gig DDR2 memory sticks. There was um, a two gig stick, and I think, it wasn't the original five gig, I'm trying to remember, I think it had two two gig sticks and two one gig sticks installed, so six gig total, um, but I pulled out those two gig sticks and I put one gig sticks instead, um, so I could be able to have those two gig sticks available for future machines, because the DDR2 memory I've been running really low, and I need those um, those two gig sticks to be able to put in in other machines. Um, and then as far as system board goes, uh, you've got the PCI expansion slots here um, for uh, for add-ons. That GPU was installed into this slot here. Uh, and then uh, PCI uh, SATA connections, there's two in use for the optical drive and the storage drive and then two free. And then on the system board still has a an IDE and a floppy controller if you uh, required that for some strange reason. Um, fans here and here. Um, I didn't go through and do a deep cleaning of this system again because I'm trying to turn it around as quick as possible to make sure that I can get it out into someone else's hands, but it has been dusted out, vacuumed. Um, I didn't repaste, um, but the system doesn't appear to be running too hot. So I may just skip it completely on this system just to get it done and out the door. Um, but right now what we'll do is we'll close up the lid here and uh, get this thing plugged in and uh, take a look at uh, what it can do. All right, we're gonna power up here. Hear that media tray scanning and then the stuff spinning up inside. We'll get an HP splash screen here. Uh, the system recovery and diagnostics on F11 and F9 won't work uh, on this anymore because it doesn't have the like recovery partition on the system. Um, it's a you know clean a clean install of Windows 10 now. Uh, so those uh, those won't actually end up going anywhere. Uh, but here we'll have Windows starting up here. I went ahead and installed um, the 64-bit uh, version of Windows 10 on this system. Um, normally, on a you know an older system that has you know less memory and less performance, I'll just stick with doing the 32. Oh, I forgot to plug in the LAN. Um, but I um, 
I decided that because this system can take more memory, I think it can do up to a maximum of at least eight gig, um, if not 16. Um, but even if it can do up to eight, that's, that's not usable in 32 uh, bit windows. So uh, I'll leave it here. If the, you know, whoever's gonna be using this decides to ever upgrade it or add more to it in the future, uh, keep it for a longer period of time that they'll have the option to be able to make those upgrades possible. Um, again, any of these older systems, like this box, you know, it's not the most powerful processor, but it is a quad core processor. And uh, adding a, you know, a discrete GPU to this and upgrading it to eight gig of memory and adding an SSD drive, you've got a, you know, you've got a fully capable system of running some low end gaming. Um, even as it is right now, using something like GeForce Now would be fully possible with a system like this. Again, not going to expect super super performance because the GPU the the CPUs are not the CPUs not not the the greatest um, in terms of um, frequency performance. But we'll start up uh, hardware info here, and you can take a look. And we'll open up um, the Google Chrome at the same time to get things up and running here. But you can see Windows is pretty snappy. Um, even as is here in terms of what it's capable of doing, uh, moving around and showing things off. Let's uh, show off our graphics capability here. So um, the AMD Phenom 9150E is the compute here. It's a quad core processor and you're running at 1.8 gigahertz per core. Uh, so again, that's not super fantastic awesome, uh, but you know, for general computing, you're going to be okay here uh, in most cases. Drive-wise, we've got that uh, 500 gig uh, drive. I don't know why it keeps showing up as 640. Maybe this is the original drive, but it's not. It's a 500 gig hard drive. So maybe it's just the way that they, you know, Western Digital was was showing off this drive when they were when they were selling it. Um, in terms of the capacity, maybe the maximum unformatted capacity would be that high. Uh, Memory-wise, we got four gig. We got one. Three micron uh, dims here, and then an SK Hynix uh, dim here. Um, all the same. They're all um, they're all PC sixty four hundred uh, DDR 2s so they're all running you know exactly the same, and they're all you know uh, one by eights. So no differences there in terms of capability. And then this onboard graphics card we have here, this N four sixty one fifty SE with uh, one hundred and twenty eight. Uh, meg of RAM available. So what can that handle um, as far as performance? Well, we'll take a look and see here uh, what we've got to work with as far as performance is concerned. Um, click on trending in movies, and I want to make sure I select one here that isn't immediately going to catch me on the demonetization engine here. Even with no audio, uh, some of these things just pick up. So I believe we've been able to manage getting this set of trailers uh, running a little bit. Get this uh, dead mouse ad out of the way. Nothing like gets dead mouse here. It's fine. He's, 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 he's cool. Uh, but here we'll run 1080p and see the performance here in terms of movement. It's kind of, it's a little bit hard to tell um, in some of the parts of this particular trailer because it does like the slow-mo and regular speed but it does seem a little tiny bit choppy in terms of the frame capability. And that may be, you know, that may be just putting a little too much stress. When I drop it down to 720p, yeah, I can clearly see, you may not be able to see it in the video quality here, but I can clearly see an improvement in the, in, in how smooth the playback is. So again, it's 720p performance. If you had, um, a better video card in here, maybe it would improve it, but I don't know. I think that may just be stressing the upper limits of how much um, how much a 1.8 gigahertz processor, even with quad, is going to be able to manage uh, processing this information um, into the system for playback. So that's that, but it does have the capability to do that. So certainly doing a, a Zoom meeting uh, in the class, in your with your your um, teacher doing a, a Zoom meeting or something, um, you'd be able to handle this fine. Of course, you don't have a camera included with the system, but I'm not sure. We don't even know if that's the way it's going to be for kids setting up for these classroom things. 
Uh, sensor wise, this is one of the things I found interesting that um, hardware info didn't actually pull a lot of sensor info for temperature gauge. Uh, you can see here this Pegatron Corporation NARA 3 NVIDIA MCP. Um, it's running 53 degrees, which is pretty like standard. It didn't, I, when I was testing this thing out and pushing it, um, it doesn't really go any higher than that or any lower than that. It's just kind of there. Um, so I've decided, you know, when I tried to, when I tried to fix the other one by, you know, like doing like putting some thermal paste on it and cleaning off the stuff that was crusty underneath, it didn't improve it a lick. So I'm just leaving this one the way it is, uh, learning my lesson the first time. But there's no information. The other, the other chipset had a separate temperature for the chipset and then a separate one for the graphics adapter, which is basically the same chip. Uh, and then the processor doesn't have any, we'll scroll up here, here's the CAP, CPU, the processor doesn't have any temperature information either. So that was kind of interesting here that it's maybe just the sensors are either not readable by hardware info. Um, if I downloaded CPU Z, maybe it would have some information on it that's not showing up here. Um, or maybe there's just no temperature gauge <laughs> built into this. Um, but as far as you know, feeling it, you know, I, I had the, when I had the, the uh, door off when I was trying this out earlier, um, I didn't feel any heat coming off of the, off of the, the processor level. Uh, it didn't seem like it was overheating at all. Um, obviously the heat sink that's over top of the NCP was getting warm, but that's to be expected based on the fact that it's this crappy NVIDIA MCP thing that they were doing. So that's this system ready to go. Um, all up and running, refreshed and ready for a new home. I just got to make sure I've got a keyboard and mouse and power supply with it and then uh, respond to one of the people who've been asking for these. And um, we arrange for a drop off or pickup or whatever we're going to do in the next couple of days and they'll be ready to go. Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, we'll catch you again in the next one. Stay safe.